it looks like Microsoft's found its mojo and has started really innovating again. I'll give you my thoughts on the Microsoft Surface 3 right after this. Don't go away. Hey everybody, Bruce Naylor, aka Frugal Tech. Thanks for watching my video. I always appreciate when you like them. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down below and there'll probably be one up here, an annotation. So thank you very much. Um, recently I was asked uh, in a comment on my, one of my videos, hey, can't wait to see your impression of the Surface 3. So here it is. I'm going to respond to that. And as you can tell by the title, I mentioned that I would buy it over a 2015 MacBook, and I'll explain my reasoning on that a little bit later into the video. But let's get right to it. Uh, as you know, Microsoft had the Surface RT, and they took a $900 million write-off because people didn't understand it was a very special version of Windows that wouldn't run things like iTunes or some of their favorite games, etc. It wasn't meant for that. And uh, so it didn't do well, and we won't go any further with RT. So Microsoft has eff effectively killed it off. And that left kind of a hole in the uh, Surface product line. And Microsoft has now delivered the Surface 3 for starting at $499 with 2 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, or a 599 version with 4 gigabytes of memory and 128 gigabytes of storage. And uh, that's a that's a really that's the same money that you're going to be looking for basically an iPad, which is a you know, a high end uh, high end tablet. But look what you're getting for the money so much more. You're actually not getting just a content consumption device, which essentially an iPad really is. You're getting a full blown Windows PC in a tablet form factor, and that's what makes it surprisingly useful. It's the versatility of the device. Not only is it a content consumption device, but it's a productivity tool as well. Now, it is running an Intel Atom uh, Z7 quad-core processor that will turbo boost up to 2.4 gigahertz. It's not going to be a machine designed for doing things like video editing or heavy-duty uh, content creation, but more as a daily driver for those people that need to use office productivity applications, Web browsing, you know, looking at YouTube videos, Facebooking, email, all that stuff, all that fun stuff that most people use their PCs for and probably will do okay with some really light gaming as well. It's not going to play Crisis or something like that, but it's a good daily driver, especially for those people that are on the go and they want something thin, light, good battery life, and, you know, has a little bit of zip to it with expandability and the ability to dock and use it with the with a you know, monitor display, external display, and a, and a full-blown keyboard. Now, it does not come with a keyboard, which would be an extra 130 bucks, thus driving the price of 629 out the door. However, if you have a, a, a you can go get a cheaper Bluetooth keyboard, it'll work just fine with the Surface. So uh, that's entirely optional. Personally, if I were going to buy one, I would get it with the type cover. Um, what else do you get with this? How about HD webcam up front 3.5 megapixel rear camera at 8 megapixels? And of course the mini display port. It's got a new and improved kickstand, which uh, looks to be pretty well weighs less than one uh, a pound and a half and uh, it, So it's got a lot going for it and so when uh, so when I said I would buy this over a MacBook and people said well, what about an iPad? There's simply no comparisons night and day. Why would you buy an iPad unless you're so deeply locked into the Apple ecosystem that it wouldn't make any sense? You know, if you're looking for a content consumption only device, there's going to be other devices out there that's going to fill the bill and do it for less money. If you're looking for something more powerful, you want to do video editing, that type of thing, on you know, even on a mobile basis, then look at the big brother of the Surface 3 and get the Surface 3 Pro or Surface Pro 3, whichever. Get one of those. Or, I mean, OEMs have got all kinds of different Ultrabooks and convertibles and, and everything you look at. Now, if you want more of a Surface-like experience and you're really on a budget, look no further than the Acer Aspire, and it is called the Switch 10. Found one on Amazon for $320. Bucks. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have quite as nice a display. Uh, it doesn't have things like the wireless AC that the Surface 3 has. You know, it's compromises, but for 320 bucks, it does come with a 10-inch display, keyboard, use it as a laptop. You know, come with the keyboard, you can use a laptop, or you can use it 
as a tablet as well. So think of it as a poor man's version of the Surface 3. Now, what about the MacBook? Well, here was my thinking on this. So the entry-level MacBook is $12.99. To be fair, it does come with a keyboard. So I have to be fair with the Surface and add a keyboard for the $130. Brings my price to $6.29 on the Surface. It's still $1,300 on the MacBook. Also, I'm getting 8 gigabytes of memory on the MacBook, MacBook versus 2, and I understand about the story. Look, I understand I'm getting a nice, a nice display on the MacBook, etc. But I, I don't have touch on the MacBook. I don't have the expandability. I'm paying almost $700 more for the MacBook. I'm getting a thinner, lighter device than the MacBook. Both are meant to be used as kind of daily driver, general purpose stuff. You can't really do heavy duty video editing on the MacBook either. Uh, it's about as powerful as a 2011 MacBook Air with the uh, dual core i7 of the time. So Apple's kind of taken a step backwards performance wise, well, whatever. So both things being equal, am I really gaining that much more with the MacBook for twice the price? I don't think I am. I think I get a lot more versatility. Oh, and I also get a free copy of Office with the MacBook as well. So ultimately, I think I would be better off either getting a Surface Pro 3 for the same amount of money or pocketing the difference and get the Surface uh, 3 and buying some goodies for it like a dock and the type cover and the pen and all that cool stuff and still have money left over. I just think for a daily driver, for a lot of people on the go and, you know, they want to dock it or hook it up to a monitor night or vice versa, I just think the Surface makes a whole lot more sense. But I want your opinion down in the comments below. Bruce Naylor, talk to you later.